pop this up a little bit. There we go. So, I've been coming back doing the little pre lunacy chart. Oh, I should say good morning to everybody. It's a beautiful morning. Drizzly, Nizzly, what a beautiful morning, beautiful day. And I've got a teapot, a glass teapot full of cleavers. Okay, so I've picked quite a lot and I've rolled them up into quite a firm sort of little bundle. And I'm just going to pour boiling water over the top of that and then just let it steep for um, 5, 10, 15 minutes. I mean, basically, I'm just going to leave the cleavers in there because I'm going to add this to tea. So what I normally do then, I would have like half a cup of bog standard tea and half a cup, you know, kind of top it up to full level with the cleaver tea. For me, it's really good in, you know, just sort of getting these glands here working, the drainage, the lymphatic, sim, the lymphatic system. And uh, it's something that I've used now for quite a few years and I find it very, very good. The other thing I use is fresh lemons. So I will make up um, a lemon, I mean, I might even squeeze lemon into this. So as when it cools down, I then have that with a little bit of lime cordial as a soft drink. Beautiful. I'm inclined to use herbs a lot. So I will just go out into the garden and I will gather up just whatever I intuitively feel is right. So it could be raspberry leaves, um, sage, thyme, uh, parsley, anything. Uh, meadow sweet, I've yeah, been using that quite a lot recently. And just making infusions or what we call teas. So here we go. Just let that steep, as my grandmother used to say, or what we now say, infuse. It's basically steep. So, there we go. I've got my tea, and uh, I'm going to enjoy that. Well, good afternoon. It's ten minutes before four. There's a little moth in here, flitting about. Do you know, it's so wonderful to see the moths because they're becoming few and far between. It's shocking, really. I mean, it really is shocking because very, very few people are aware of it. Um, I remember as a child growing up, there'd be moths, like you just open the door and my father would be shouting, close that door, you'll be letting all those moths in. <laughs> Quickly close the door. And now, I mean, I can sit here off an evening because it doesn't get dark until, I suppose, oh, until about, mm, about 10 o'clock. No, later than that, about 11 still. And uh, I'll sit here, the back door open, which is just behind the camera, and um, the light's on, or a lamp on, and I'll be lucky to see one or two moths flitting in. So insects are on the decline, which, which is what this video is about. I'm, I'm not going to give you a big depressing, you know, thing about the decline of insects because 
that doesn't do anything to um, stem the tide of decline. I'm going to empower you with something that you can do, which I do all the time here. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> He's trying to get in on the scene. Um, I'm going to empower you with something that, something that you can do. And that is quite simply, and especially as we come into this time of the year, because I've been doing a lot of clearing up out the front um, and cutting back. Make little habitat piles. Make cold compost piles. Leave the edges of your garden or your land as untidy as possible. Now I don't mean untidy in terms of old tires and bits of wood and stuff. I mean, let nature have a little untidy edge and get out there at this point and do a little bit of chop and drop. You can build up little piles of chop and drop and when the autumn is coming in, leaf piles and allow the leaves to just stay in those corners, especially the corners, you know, the little edgy bits. Because that's where most of our insects spend the winter. We've become so terribly tidy. Tidy up, tidy up, tidy up. Treating Mother Earth like our sitting room. Mother Earth is not our sitting room. Unless you hear it be out in the cottage, in which case you'll find leaves on the floor as they blow in. And little insects, I mean, uh, this cottage is just filled with little insects and little spiders and moths and, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's called living in harmony, which I urge you to do wherever practical. Okay, and that's the little rider on that, wherever practical. A lot of people have garages and sheds and they're forever tidying them up, cleaning them out, sweeping them up, hoovering them. Keep your own habitat clean and tidy, if you must. <laughs> no, this isn't a let out clause in order for you to become a complete slop. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. They don't have to go explaining things. If you're in any way in harmony with Mother Earth, you will get it. So that's all really. before I go there was something I wanted to say because it, it did shock me I said in my previous video you know that I um, oh I think I said maybe I didn't that I have been watching because I have Netflix I have a little screen here which is for DVDs and, and primarily for plugging my little laptop into and I can pull up Netflix and then get it on the bigger screen. Yeah, technology is fabulous. It really is fabulous. I love it. Absolutely love technology. Um, but yeah, so I was watching on Netflix because occasionally I've got to watch complete dross in order just to switch off. And I mean just switch off completely. And I just watch draws. And one of the, <laughs> I suppose, kind of weird and wonderful programs on Netflix is the Real Housewives series. So um, I'm watching the Real Housewives of um, Beverly Hills. 
mind blowing. It's just mind blowing stuff. I mean, it is definitely the program for me to switch off when I'm watching it because it's it's unbelievable to me how some people live, but intriguing as well. Yeah, and I know a lot of it's put on and all the rest of it, but it's just pure entertainment, you know, for, for like I say, chilling out, zoning out, and uh, Kyle, in that series, who I quite like, I quite like Kyle and Kim, they were, they were child um, actors in Beverly Hills, and uh, Kim actually has got a brilliant sense of humour. Since she dried out and gave up the booze, her humour, I mean, she's a comedian. She really is an excellent comedian. And, and also, I would say, kind of script writer, because, you know, she's not reading from the script. She's just, you know, being herself. A much more interesting person, sober, by the way than drunk but um, yeah I've got great time for Kyle and Kim but I was something shocked me you know when I was watching Kyle um, she was at home and there was this very faux by that I mean false kind of Wiccan whose name is Carlton <laughs> right goddess help us all that there's such a person who is showcasing Wiccan. Not, I, I'm not Wiccan anyway. I mean, I don't, that's a relatively new, I mean, 1950s began, um, New Age religion. Um, and I would go back to the old ways. Mine is definitely the old ways and nothing to do with witchery. I don't even like the word witch. I, I like the word goddess. But anyway, so <laughs> there was something. There was, they, they were eating outdoors and there was a bee. And Kyle went, ah, the, the, the bee, ah, kill it, kill it. And uh, it was just squashed. They just squashed it. I felt really upset. I felt really upset. And at that point, of course, it stopped being entertainment. It stopped being switch off, airhead entertainment. And it became a point of upset. I got upset. Um, and I got upset more for the fact that that was a prevalent attitude. You know, I've lived here almost two decades now, living in, in the embracing beauty of Mother Earth, and I've never been stung by a bee. And you've all seen how close the bees come to the camera and sometimes they kind of fly in front of me in the camera. It is a sad reflection on human unkind that we have to kill so much. You have the face of a wolf sometimes, Jack. Do you know that? I see a very, very ancient, very, very ancient creature looking out at me. I see the wolf in you. I 
see your ancestors. I see your bloodline. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I see the she-wolf in you. Isn't that interesting? I see your mother. Your mother's 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 mother. Yeah. How amazing it must have been when my ancestors first looked into the eyes of your ancestors and bonded. Beautiful wolf. Mm. Noble creature. Oh, blessings to you all. Mm. People often ask me, how did Belton Cottage look at the very beginning? Well, this was a photograph taken on the very first day that I saw it. But what I was looking at wasn't what you see here. I already had a vision in my head of how it would look. This was the driveway up to the cottage. You can see how bereft it is. And this was at late April, early May. Sad. And all alone, abandoned almost, but not for long, because magic happens when you start to work with Mother Earth. Did you know that? You unleash magic by planting. You can support Beelton the Cottage and the work I do across social media by buying any one of my books. That's the first one, A Cottage in Three Acres. That tells the story of how Beelton a Cottage came into being. There are books, maps, um, a calendar printed each year and bumper stickers. And the link to purchasing any of these can be found below every video. All are printed here in Ireland in my local town and all are posted from Ireland in my local post office.